Right. Today we are very blessed indeed to have uh, an individual come and speak with us. And I, uh, I Googled her. That's the one thing I like about the internet is you can do some great things uh, via Google and find things out. But <clears throat> our speaker today is State Representative Jenna Powell, and she is serving her first term in the Ohio House of Representatives after being elected in 2018. She represents the 80th district, which encompasses Miami County, as well as a portion of Dark County. Representative Powell is from the Southern Dark County, where her family has been farming for generations. After receiving her degree from Liberty University in business, she alongside her brother began to build an outdoor marketing company called Huntington Outdoor. At 25, she is the youngest legislature currently serving in the General Assembly. In 2019, Representative Powell was named to Forbes prestigious 30 under 30 list for law and policy. Representative Powell is an active member of her local church, Greenfield Grace Brethren, and resides in Arcanum. Please welcome Representative Powell. Thanks for having me today. Um, so I feel like before I speak, I like to make it an agreement on both sides. Um, before I got into politics, I wasn't a speaker at all. And sometimes I can be a little confusing. So if you guys will bear with me, I'm gonna try to tell you a couple stories. Oh no, that's all right. I'm gonna try to tell you a couple stories and if you can follow along with me in the best possible way, <coughs> that will be good. Does that sound good with everybody? Yeah? yeah. Okay, cool, all right. So, and, and to give you a little background, that whole uh, introduction was awesome. I'm just a farm girl. I'm, I'm one of seven kids in my family, born and raised in Dark County, Ohio. And uh, God opens a lot of doors so that I'm here today. I didn't plan on this my whole life. A lot of people that plan to be in politics, they have a poli-sci major or something like that. I have a business marketing major. My passion was business and God totally directed my paths differently. And here I am today. Um, and, and one of, yeah, it's awesome. How cool is God, right? So. And, and I have a speech, we're going to do the best I can to get through it, and then I'll tell you guys a little bit about the end of what's been going on in the legislature. Um, but about three years ago, I had the opportunity of going to Israel. Um, and when I was in, in Israel, I went to the Yad Vashem. And for those that don't know what Yad Vashem is, it is the Holocaust Museum in Jerusalem. And uh, one day when I was walking through there, at that point in my life, I wasn't interested in politics. Um, I was always pro-life. I actually I have pictures of me from about two years old on, um, standing up in front of our local town doing the uh, March for Life and different things like that in our local community. So my mom and my parents always instilled in me how important uh, protecting life was. But I didn't quite understand the implications of what that really meant. Um, until about three years ago, I, I went to Jerusalem and I was in Yad Vashem. And how Yad Vashem works is it's this uh, just really beautiful um, kind of commemorating the lives of the, the people that lost their lives in the Holocaust. Um, and we start the, start the tour and there's an older gentleman um, that's starting to give us a tour. And as we are walking, we get to the end of it um, and we're, we're reading about stories of individuals. And then as well, we, we see, okay, some highs and some lows that happened um, during the Holocaust. Um, and, during, and at the end of our tour, the gentleman that's doing the tour looks at us and he says, can you believe that six million Jews died during the Holocaust? And then he says, can you believe that 1.1 million of those that died were also children? And at that point, tears are just streaming down his face as it was many of his friends that were killed in the Holocaust. And then he looks at me again and he, and he says, and he knew, knew we were a Christian group and he says, I wonder where else in the world that innocent lives are being lost. And we both kind of just looked at each other and had this realization at that point um, that, you know, here in the United States of America, there are millions of children being aborted every single year. So when I got home from my trip to Israel, I just started researching and I went to March for Life. And what I realized that I knew numbers before, but until I started studying and read it, reading it myself, it didn't really hit me. So what we saw was that there was oh, there's been 60 million babies aborted since 1973. Here in the United States, every single day, 3,000 children are aborted. Every 90 seconds, a, a baby dies. And here in the state of Ohio, 57 babies die each and every day. And I'm telling you guys nothing new. You already know these things. 
But one of the beautiful parts of walking through Yad Vashem is that, you know, we're not just reading stories of individuals who died. Then those are terrible things. But we're also reading stories of individuals who stood up and said, enough is enough. And I'm going to not sit idly by and allow this, you know, atrocity to happen. So one of the individuals um, that is in Yad Vashem is named Nicholas Winton. And I want to tell you guys a little bit about him real quick because his life is just incredible and an inspiration to me. Um, he was born on May 19th, 1909 in Hampstead, London. Um, his parents, his dad was a banker and his mom was a mother of three children. In 1923, he went to Stowe School, but he left that school without the qualifications he needed. So he continued on in the evenings and did evening school, and he volunteered at a bank. Until one day, he returned back to London to work in the London Stock Exchange, so he became very su successful. When he was around 29 years old, he was um, getting ready for a Christmas break, and he was going to go to Switzerland. So as he was ready to go, a friend called him and said, skip your ski trip to Switzerland and come to Prague. So this gentleman said, okay, I'll do it. So he skipped his ski trip and he, and he went to Prague. And when he went there, he discovered just atrocities that were happening um, to Jewish children. So over the next several months, he helped assist Jewish children from the risk of the Nazis. And the kind of the expedition that he started was called the Children's Transport. And he continued doing that for about nine months until World War II started. And in that time, he saved over 669 children. And what's crazy about him is you would think people around him are like, you go, that's incredible. Or after the war, he would be celebrated as a hero. But what was really interesting about his life is that he actually, his mother was actually one of the only people that knew he did that for over 50 years. And his wife one day found an entire booklet in the closet, an entire booklet of children's names and biographies and information that he had gathered over the years. And his wife then said, well, we have to do something with this. This is people's lives. So then she handed it over to the Holocaust Museum and they started searching it out and come to find out, you know, then, then he became this hero. And for a long time, he thought he was alone, just doing what he could to protect one child at a time. And what's crazy is that I started doing research of the 669 children that he saved. He had thousands of children's names that he did everything he could to save every child, but there were 669. And then of those 669, there were some that became members of parliament, mathematicians, filmmakers, mothers, teachers, and all of these different things. And I think what we see from this man's story is that one, you know, what, what, what I would say, he did what he could, where he was, for the glory of God. And he was willing to say, like, I will give up everything because the life of one child matters. And to me, that is just truly an incredible story of going, you know, this man didn't think that he was going to become famous. You know, he, he frankly probably thought he was going to lose everything because he was forging documents and all of these things that were not legal. Um, and so it's just inter interesting to follow his life and go, you know, when, we, when we're walking in Yad Vashem, in the museum there, we see terrible things, but we also see men who said, you know, for the sake of one individual, we are going to stand up and say enough is enough. And to me, that story is just, I don't know, it's just incredible when I kind of read that story. Um, and let me flip. When we take a look at like what's going on here in the United States, so I had the awesome opportunity of being sworn in January. Um, for me, one of the reasons of getting into office was because I said, I don't want to sit idly by. I don't know what else to do, but God put this in my path. And, um, you know, first off, the number one greatest thing we can do and what I've seen in the legislature is that people's hearts and their minds have to change through the work of Jesus Christ. You know, we can speak all we want, and I have over and over to some of these individuals in Columbus, but they don't see the truth. They don't see that these children are babies, or maybe they do see it, and they don't care, unfortunately. You know, but so I was sworn in January, and in March we had the amazing opportunity of voting on the heartbeat bill, which I'm sure so many of you have done so much work for, because the heartbeat bill was truly an act of individuals in the community for years upon years upon years saying enough is enough and we're going to make a difference 
And when they first brought out this plan, people mocked them, people laughed at them, and people said there's no way that this is actually going to happen and take place. And this, this even started way before I was ever in politics. I was, I was just really little then. Um, but it was incredible just to be able to be there in March and to be able to take the vote that said, you know, life is valuable and life is meant to be protected. Yes. And it's exciting. And we can, I think we should give a hand to God for that because how cool is that? Yeah. So that's, that's amazing. But as many of you know, you know, unfortunately, the heartbeat bill has been held up um, by the Supreme Court. And um, with the ruling of Roe versus Wade, that stopped it. And we are going to do everything we can continue doing in the legislature. You know, that's, uh, there's organizations around the state of Ohio that have sat down time after time and said, okay, what are the next steps that we can do to protect life? And it's amazing to have the organizations to do that. Um, but it takes every single person. Oh, wow. I don't think they like us. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I, I think, but it takes every single person every day to stand up and say, you know what? We have to protect life in all forms. And that can mean working in the legislature. And that's what I try to do, you know, while I'm there to say, okay, what can we do to advance life? And what can we do additionally? Why we're, you know, when I started, and sorry, this is where I get rambly and I apologize. When I started, you go in and you think, I have all these great ideas. But what I have found out more than anything is that it talks about in the Bible that God gives wisdom and God gives direction. And that's what I do literally every single day when I go in because I say, you know what, God, there are way smarter men and women that have come before me and we are still fighting this abortion. But that's where we have to come together before the throne of God and pray every single day and say, God, what are we going to do to fight for the lives of the unborn? Because I truly believe that the, the abortion today is the, the gravest atrocity of our time. And hopefully, in whether it's 5, 10, 20, or 50 years, whatever it might be, we will look back and we'll say, this is not okay and this is not right. And what I love about seeing all of you guys here is that you can look and say, you know, I did something about it. You know, we did not sit idly by and allow innocent lives to be taken and just turn a blind eye to the injustice. Because that was the biggest thing for me in Yad Vashem. I was walking there and I'm like, I, I remember saying out loud, how could people just not pay attention to the evils that were happening to these people while an entire, you know, group of people are being killed off? Um, so that's what we really look at and we say, you know, what do we do? We pray every single day before the throne of God and we ask him for guidance and wisdom. And it's going to take every single person here together. And, you know, one of us might be the person that finally, finally gets to break this horrible just act in America. But I do believe that it takes every individual um, coming together, caring for people in our community. For a long time, the pro-life movement, unfortunately, you know, has, has gotten in sometimes a stigma of not being kind. But that has changed. That has changed so greatly, I think, in the last so many years. Because I believe, you know, when I look at women and say, no, 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 we want to keep the baby. We want to support you. We are the kindest legislators there are. And that other people can lie to you. But when we look at the statistics, there's a lot of issues that have arisen from abortion. So we have to do our message with love as well and say, out of love, not only are we going to protect you as the mother, but we're going to protect the innocent life inside of you. Because that, that the child is a baby and deserves every opportunity that all of us have here today and so that is just what i'm passionate about that's what we're working on in the legislature but it's voices like you guys coming to the state capitol calling people because when we look at the heartbeat bill the heartbeat bill would not have been passed without the grassroots effort and the prayer and the hard work of individuals and it is my huge honor to be able to be a voice for you guys in columbus um, even if you're not in my district, you know, I get to be a voice of the people and as Christians and individuals, you know, I get to be a voice for Jesus. How cool is that? Every single day I get to be there. Um, and that's a blessing. So, there is one last thing that if, as many of you guys have probably heard, it's been, it is an interesting to think through that I've been thinking through as well, is, and I think I lost one of my pages. No. Okay, here we go. Um, is the, how many of you guys have heard about the award, The Righteous Among um, Nations? It's a prominent award. Um, this is an award given out to non-Jews who risk their lives fighting for Jews' lives. So this is an award given out. And I think what's interesting is oftentimes, probably like many back in the day, they felt like they were fighting alone. And that 
You know, is there anyone else just here fighting in this fight? Because right now in America, there's 11.77 million Ohioans. You know, sometimes it feels like, at least for me, maybe it's not for you, but sometimes in the legislature, legislature it feels like I'm alone. It feels like it's like, is this making a difference? Are we actually doing anything? We have one life. Are we using it wisely? But I think what's interesting is in January 1st of 2016, over 26,000 people received this award in over 44 countries. And I think what's interesting is at that time, people probably didn't realize that other people were doing this. Um, you know, even, even the gentleman, you know, he, he, didn't, he didn't tell anybody. He was doing it alone and he was doing what was right. I think the beautiful thing is like, you might feel like you're just like this little star in the sky alone, but when we look from the bottom, we see tons of them and they shine really, really brightly. And so thank you guys for listening. Thank you for the work that you guys are doing. Um, if I can serve you in any way in the legislature, in any other way, call my office. I'm here to serve you guys and be a voice not only for you, but also for the unborn. Um, because that's what Jesus calls us to do. He calls us to be a voice for those that don't have a voice. And one last thing, and then I'm done, is that sometimes when I get frustrated being in the legislature, um, it's, not, it's not an easy place to be, and there's a lot of places that aren't easy to be. So I'm not going to pretend to be in a place alone. Um, but what I do a lot of times think about is this, is that... You know, it feels like we're in a war, right? It feels like we're in a war every single day and we continue fighting and we continue fighting. And if you're a warrior alone, alone you wanna give up. At least I do some days. Some days I just wanna put my head on the desk and cry and give up and say, I'm done. But what we know from the Bible, and I don't know what every denomination people are from. I'm a Christian, sort of from like a Southern Baptist church. Um, but what we know and what we believe is that we see that Jesus has overcome already in the Bible. And so that we're not warriors fighting a battle here on earth. We're actually not. We are ambassadors of truth of the word of God. An ambassador, we look at the Bible and we see truth is there. And we've been given it by God. And we don't have to fight as if we're, we're winning the battle. We know biblically that Jesus has won when he died on the cross and rose again. And, and we have life and abundance and truth in him. So together, we can now go out as ambassadors of truth to the Word of God and speak it boldly, no matter no matter what people say, because we have won the war and we have the victory in Jesus, and that is a beautiful truth, an amazing thing as we continue fighting for life here in Dayton and around the United States. So thank you for having me.